So hi everyone, uh, welcome. We want to go through uh, the user testing with you. We want to go through the migration with you. Uh, firstly, uh, Bamini and I, we will speak to you about the user testing, then Anna Issa will take over on the migration side. For the user testing, we are now deep in the user testing phase. This is of course, very, very critical indeed. Uh, Bamini coordinates the test management here in the ECB. I lead the testing and migration streams and uh, what we will do is go through with you to look from your perspective what we can offer you in terms of support and what you will need to do. Uh, on Anna Issa's side, she is coordinating the migration testing and also she will play a very large role in the go live. I'm monitoring your questions at the moment and I'll come back and I'll go through a lot of them as well. But maybe we'll just start now with the presentation. Can we advance the slides? So we will, yep. Do we want yeah. to bring in Bamini? Great. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll start on this one and then we'll bring in Bamini, uh, so. uh, Aileen. Yeah, thanks a lot. So as you can see, we have 12 weeks until user testing completion. So the very first point here is that the 20th of September 24 is our formal end of testing. You will be able to test continuously afterwards. There will be no problem at all. The system is not closing down or anything of the sort. What we need to have is a cutoff for our reporting and as a part of a project milestone in order that our, our board can make an informed go no go decision that Audrain already taught you about. Yeah. So if you can see our central bank testing, we're continuing to test uh, the central bank functionality. We're continuing to test all of the other functionality as well. And of course, as we progress into June and July, we have the standard release 2024 as well. And we also have to make sure that we retest all of the bug fixes which have been, which are being, uh, which are being uh, deployed by our provider. Yeah, in the community testing phase for you, this is really the 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 most important part of your life on your side. When we move into when we finish our migration test, our migration weekend dress rehearsal next weekend, then the the system will be ready for you to begin further functional testing. You had a period previously, but now you will have the entry criteria again with T2S and T2, and all of these are interconnected in the test environment. So this is a very, very important part. And we have a plan for July and August where we will have dedicated campaigns related to the various domains. Please stay in contact with your national central bank. Please stay in contact with your CSD when we want to test corporate actions, when we want to test the open market operations, we will be letting you know exactly the best period to do so. Also, we're talking about the reporting, all of the different uh, functionalities and domains of the ECMS system. We will be looking to test these heavily during July and August. So you can see this according to our plan here. And then of course, uh, as Dimitri said, we've just finished the migration test nine pre-migration, and now we move on to the migration weekend dress rehearsal. Then we move on to the uh, migration test nine. From the from the uh, production viewpoint, we're currently in connectivity. Anna Issa will discuss to you uh, about what that's about. Then we have our pre-migration in production where the reference data for the service is laid down and all of the reference data related to T2S and to T2, to the interaction between the services. This is all part of our pre-migration. We must make sure that our reference data is laid down. We must make sure that we're ready to begin. Then we have our preparation week before the go live weekend. And then finally, we will go live. So this is the, the project timeline, if you like. These are the, the 12 weeks until the 20th of September. But after the 20th of September, right up to the go live date, you will have access to the test environment and you can continue to test and continue to get ready for our go live. So please don't fear or say anything. The 20th of September is a deadline in terms of reporting so that we can bring the good view to our governing council to say that ECMS is ready to go live in November. So I would hand over Bamini and you could uh, you could go through the milestones maybe at a more granular level. Okay, thank you, Bobby. Um, good morning, all of you. 
so um here yeah in from this slide onwards you will uh, see uh, the milestones and then the detailed uh, planning for the different uh, um, campaigns yeah that we want to uh, conduct okay so in this slide what you see uh, is the first uh, uh, key date is the 24th of june where we will uh, get back the interconnection to of t2s and clm to ecms okay but then uh, the week following the 24th to so 24th till 30th then the, the migration testing test nine yeah as we uh, were saying in the beginning of the presentation so migration test nine will be ongoing still the preparation week and then uh, we have the migration week and rest rehearsal which will be uh, finishing on the, on the 30th of june and then uh, from the 1st of July, then uh, we uh, restart the community testing phase. The functional testing uh, can restart with the T2S and the CLM uh, uh, interconnection established with the CMS. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that, that's that's the main uh, milestone that we want to share here. And then from uh, another, I mean, from the start of 1st of July, we have two slots, three week slots. That's called a light timing testing window. So which what you see here is from the 1st of July until 18th of July is the first three week slot. And then we have uh, another slot from 19th of August till 6th of September. So what um, is the difference here is basically in these three weeks, the, the schedule uh, of the, in the test environment uh, and the support and everything will be uh, aligned uh, as we expect in, in production. Yeah. So basically the schedule, uh, the events that will be running uh, in the daytime, the nighttime. So all these will be uh, aligned um, as it's expected in production. So that's what we will be testing. Uh, so to test as close as to the production testing conditions, the production conditions. So that's uh, what we will do in these two slots. And then uh, another uh, key milestone that we want to share is uh, the, the 23rd of August. So this is the deadline for the completion of the fundamental test cases. So as you've seen that we have published the fundamental test cases that needs to be uh, executed and um, completed for each of the functional uh, modules. Yeah, And uh, so the 23rd of August is what we have uh, 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 agreed and what we see here as a deadline for the completion of these fundamental test cases. And then uh, you can then submit the outcome of these fundamental test cases to the national service test. Then uh, the next uh, point, uh, the 6th of September. Yeah, so we have the 23rd of August to complete the, fun the fundamental test cases. But nevertheless, we still have two more weeks where we can still continue the functional testing in this uh, test environment, uh, um, where we will also have you know the live timing uh, schedule applied, um, and then uh, then we hand it over for migration uh, test eleven as of sixth of September. And then uh, after that, then we have two weeks of migration test 11 happening. So from 9 till 20th, and then on the 20th of September, we, we close uh, uh, the user testing execution. Your yeah, formal uh, uh, user testing execution phase is completed. But nevertheless, as Bobby was mentioning, the test environment is going to be available and, and uh, the other testing activities can, can go on. But uh, the formal completion of the phase is on the 20th of uh, September. So that's yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. So then uh, we go to the next from the 1st of July. Yeah, so we've uh, um, opened already. If you see the domains here, yeah, uh, the what you see in the sub bullets that marketable assets, cash as collateral, corporate actions, credit claims, global credit and collateral position, monetary policy, pool position and projection. So all these modules, uh, functional modules, we have, we were already opened. Yeah, we were, uh, uh, this was being tested by all of you, uh, even before we lost the T2S and CLM interconnection uh, in the user testing environment. So, uh, so this is what we will resume the testing from the 1st of July for all these uh, modules. So the software is, is available. The environment will also be up and running from the 1st of July after migration test nine. Nevertheless, we still uh, advise uh, you to uh, contact your uh, national service desk, so respective NCVs to um, get the communication on the completion of the migration weekend activities before uh, uh, resuming the functional testing on the 1st of July. Yeah. 
So this is uh, the information we want to pass here. And then we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So here uh, it's a timeline wise, it's the same. Why we have split is because these three domains, what you see here, the provision of reference data, relocation of marketable assets, uh, and, and statements reports, these domains, uh, the, the opportunity uh, to test this before well, was not uh, possible. Yeah, it was not possible because we had some issues. We couldn't uh, hand it over to you for your testing. But from 1st of July, so uh, we... Um, also advise you to start the testing for uh, these three domains uh, again yeah for for any uh, before you start any testing so please uh, uh, contact your national service desk uh, and cbs so to get the green light from them okay uh, so that's so the first of july and then we have uh, the tripartite agents testing so currently we have planned to uh, start this testing from the 15th of uh, july uh, and then uh, the last year on the by from the end of July to the 29th of July, we also uh, would open the multi pooling. Why uh, there is a uh, it's planned only at the end of July is because currently uh, the the testing is ongoing. The Eurosystem testing is still ongoing, so we want to ensure uh, we uh, do the testing um, and and stabilize it and then hand it over to you. So. That's the reason then we want to go to end of July. So um, that's it. So as usual, uh, for all the uh, domains that we open, we always give this information in the testing conditions document. Yeah, And also in the annex of the testing conditions document, you see for every single domain, you will uh, we will list down the open issues yeah that that's uh, that could have an impact on your testing uh, on your business uh, cases so uh, please have a look at those uh, uh, list at the end annex yeah uh, at the end of the testing conditions document okay, which is published on a fortnightly basis then uh, so uh, the last two slides it, it was an overview of the different functional modules and the timeline on when we want to open that uh, to you yeah for testing but uh, the next uh, few slides would be uh, focusing on the testing campaigns so uh, apart from you know you can you can do the testing the testing can be done for uh, for all the domains across this uh, the whole user testing phase nevertheless we have particular slots for some of the critical um, uh, domains some of the critical testing uh, activities. So we have uh, allotted few time slots, and this is what we call as testing campaigns. And for the OMOS, yeah, open market uh, operations, which is which we we um, we did a similar campaign, yeah. Um, before we lost the T2S and CLM connection, we did a, a small campaign uh, in March. So similarly, we will do uh, another campaign for two weeks. Yeah, for, for in, in from 8th of July until 19th of July, as you see here. And the objective here uh, would be to test uh, these uh, uh, op operations. Yeah, so if you see uh, LAO, LPO operations, and then uh, here, so the scope, yeah, could be extended. So basically the testing is still uh, ongoing internally as well at the system level. So if we see that we could extend uh, the scope, then we will then yeah uh, extend it but we will always communicate this uh, to you via uh, the testing conditions document and via the uh, ncbs okay and based on the outcome of this test how uh, it is progressing and all if needed we might uh, we, we will be uh, uh, in also in a position to add an additional mini campaign yeah later uh, in in july we can still uh, plan this but uh, it really depends on the outcome of uh, this testing uh, uh, from 8th till 19th of july uh, and then as from august just one more point there in that slide um yeah so as from august the objective for us is or the almost is basically to test those operations that that are going to be then in, in, in production yeah and and test it like in production uh condition so this is the objective so but then of course we are we are still working on this and we will uh communicate on the further details uh, uh via the uh ncb comics okay that, uh, so the next campaign, uh, next uh, item that we really want to also focus is on the elective events. 
of course uh, the the mandate events as you say it's, it's very critical yeah so uh, what we recommend is uh, for all the uh, markets to start with the mandatory testing events as from 1st of july yeah and and then focus on this until end of july and then from from uh, beginning of august the whole month of august we have really quite a lot of elective events to be tested so they hence since we have allocated this whole uh, month yeah dedicated this whole month uh, uh, to uh, the testing of the corporate action elective events this doesn't uh, this doesn't uh, stop the testing of mandatory events in july so you can continue to test the full scope of corporate action in the whole period of the user testing phase or why we have this focused uh, four weeks of corporate action elective events testing is is really to monitor and and to to uh, see how the pro testing is going on and if there are any issues uh, yeah uh, tackle it uh, with high priority in this window so so we can really uh, progress well yeah on the elective events as well so that's hence since we have uh, located this time yeah from 1st august until 30th of june the prerequisite for this as you as you see here first is to stabilize and and uh, complete as much as possible the testing of the mandatory events which is which is in the scope of the fundamental test cases so that that's the first uh, uh, prerequisite yeah and then of course uh, for the elective events because currently the testing is also uh, uh, going on uh, uh, the hero system level so we have, there are some issues identified so the objective is to get this all uh, issues resolved uh, as soon as possible and also tested uh, again the fixes and then hand it over to you uh, from the beginning of uh, August yeah so this is the prerequisite and of objective I think I already explained the objective of this uh, campaign so thank you and then uh, the third uh, item that again we wanted to uh, give focus is on the statements yeah uh, so here uh, the prerequisite of course is is for the colleagues uh, uh, for the uh, marketers to need the, to do the uh, needed subscription and then complete the configuration for for the statements and the reports that you I know this is the prerequisite primary prerequisite and of course uh, currently there are uh, the critical issues if we, if we identify any for anything from the current uh, testing uh, uh euro system testing if we find anything then yes yeah we will also uh fix that but as of now there are no uh, blocking issues so uh, open but uh yeah this is this is uh, where we stand so to have a focused uh statements and reports weeks and we we want to do this and we want to do this we recommend to do this from the 29th july till 9th of uh, august so two weeks time again the objective wise it's the same for all the campaign is objective is the same so we give focus on those weeks and uh with respect to you know uh, the testing effort uh, and uh, the support to each other and then support from the national service desk and support from the ecms service desk so, so all all will be really focused on on these uh, um a week on on this um uh, domain yeah so that's that's what uh, we want to do i yeah that those were the three uh critical campaigns yeah that we have uh, planned as of now and then uh coming to the cross-border uh, uh testing so for the corporate action or for marketable assets or for so here what we uh so this testing phase yeah it can be done across the whole user testing execution phase so from 1st of july until 6th of uh, september uh, the testing on the cross-border cases can be done yeah uh, what we uh, here um, uh, want to share is related to the uh, communication and the you know organization of this uh, testing so basically for the ccbm testing so it's always the home central bank and the cross border central bank you know shall coordinate uh, to establish the appropriate testing conditions yeah for the uh, counterparties and then hence we ask uh, we we here we uh, advise uh, the, all the counterparties uh, to contact the home home central bank so to get the testing data so if you want to do um sorry cross-border testing on the ISINs or the assets and accounts and all these information and also on the CA events more for which against which you can do the test so all these uh, test data uh information yeah uh, you can uh, get it from your own home central bank 
yeah so we advise you to contact uh, your home central bank to get all these data and then you can start uh, testing anytime during the whole user testing phase okay that is on the ccbm and then uh, uh on the volume testing so here again uh we have uh, we have a window so from 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 22 july until 16th of august uh, around four weeks of time here uh we uh, will be yeah organizing also volume tests based on the requests that we've received yeah so you if the uh, objective of this test is basically where where the users yeah can can test if your system can process the high volume responses from the ecms uh, and and you can send a lot of instructions and then uh, see the responses and then see if your system can handle the responses and process it. Yeah, so this is the objective because the, the function or the performance testing or the volume testing of the ECMS system is, is being handled by the user system. Yeah, it will be done here. Uh, but the objective of this is, is for you to see if your system is able to cope with this high volume response. And here, so if you uh, are interested, yeah, if you uh, would like to do this uh, volumetric testing uh, in this window, then please contact uh, your NCB colleagues uh, with uh, you know, relevant information. So you will, uh, uh, and then we will process this information and, and, and come back to you with, via your NCB colleagues, come back to you with the, the date when this testing could be done in this window. Yeah, okay, so that's, uh, what I wanted to say on the volume testing, uh, just on, I, I saw that there are two questions on the NRO and the 4i. Just on the 4i's, yes, uh, to answer all these testing on the 4i's can also start as from the 1st of July. So the testing is uh, ongoing. So if there are any issues, uh, we will uh, highlight this also there in, in, in the, the domain. Yeah, within the domain, if we see already there are some issues on the 4i's for some of the YouTube screens, and we will you know, inform you via the testing conditions document. So for, you can uh, test this from the 1st of July. On the NRO, so um, it, this the NRO the screen, the, for the six screens, it will... Um, not be activated from the 1st of July. We will uh, come back to you um, uh, with the activation date for these uh, six screens. The uh, objective or the the idea would be to activate one one screen uh, one by one, yeah, um, and then test it, and then uh, finally uh, activating all six screens. So this is this is so we will go step by step. Yeah, so that's the objective. And uh, yeah, but when, yeah, as I said, we will communicate on the NRO uh, activation. Uh, yeah, also via uh, your NCB colleagues and also via the testing conditions document. So that, that those two points I saw uh, that came up in the beginning. So I, I thought it would be good to handle it. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, all. Here, uh, Bobby, uh, can I? Yes, permanent. <laughs> Okay, everybody, so we'll go through the key documents for user testing. We also have a lot of questions in the chat. I'm going to try and go through a few. I will skip a couple that are related to migration because Anna Issa is better qualified than me to, to go through them. But nonetheless, first of all, we must look at our key documents. So we publish really a, a, a wealth of documents on the ECB site. So please, uh, the ECMS info pack, especially related to user testing and migration, there's a lot of information there for you. It's not too late. We have a lot more testing to do. Please download this and please go through it. Uh, also, our, our migration and testing strategy, this is very important. The connectivity guide, as Anisa will mention to you, we are in the production connectivity now. There may still be some uh, information here that you need. Also, the terms of reference, very, very important how we act within the test environment. Please, if you haven't done so, please go through this. The fundamental test cases are what the uh, national central banks will be requiring uh, from the various counterparties in order to prove that you can uh, perform these tasks in ECMS. So please uh, download this. The testing conditions document is really the most important one that we have. It will allow you to plan your test cases. We, we have some defects in the system. We're working to improve them. When the testing uh, in, it resumes, if you like, on the 1st of July, further defects will be found. This document allows you to see the, the, the defect itself so that when you're planning your test, you can see when the delivery date for this defect is. 
you could do your planning in order to concentrate your test cases on the 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 domains which have better testing conditions and then those where the those where the defect lies you can push back that test case until it until the defect is delivered so this is a very important document please continuously download it on a fortnightly basis wait for the update and it will keep you informed of the conditions and it will become the production conditions document we will see when we decide to go live there will be still you know one or two or a few defects in the system these will be outlined here and we will also provide you with workarounds for these yeah so this is a this testing conditions will also become the production conditions document the roles for a2a and u2a and ecms are very important every action in the system has a privilege which allows you your user to perform this action these privileges are grouped into a roles you, roles you need to know these so that you can apply them to the user itself the uh, UDFS is also published. There is a training man manual which is coming from the NCBs. And as Bamini already told you about the NRO, we have tested now internally the, the non-repudiation of origin for the six screens in ECMS for which it applies. This will soon be coming to the test environment to you and you will be able to test it. And for this reason, you should have the uh, GoSign desktop. There was a question in the chat related to someone who had already downloaded the GoSign desktop, but NRO was not available. So I hope that all of you will, will make sure you have the proper version of the GoSign desktop so that we will make it available on the 1st of July and you can immediately test. So this, these are the, the, the key documents, if you like. I'll just go through the questions. There is a couple of questions about performance, about the GUI performance, and about the timeout. So for us, we are looking now to configure the test environment to be as, as close to production as possible. We hope that these performance issues will improve for the for the for the the the, the uh, participant who who questioned about the timeout. I didn't. Um, this is one that was kind of new to me, or I didn't really realize there was an issue. I will follow up on this one and we'll see what we can do about maybe increasing the GUI timeout or see if it's configurable. But we will uh, we will have a look at this one. Yeah, the uh, performance of the GUI itself. We are working, we have a non-functional task force. We're working on the U2A experience for you. We're also working on, you know, for U2A very much the, the, the performance when you have a lot of concurrent users. This is something that is very important to us. On the A2A side, we're looking at how the system performs when it integrates huge files. This is being done in a different test environment, not the one that you use. So these, our volumetric tests as such do not uh, will not reduce your experience in your environment. So please do not worry about that. And then as Bamini said, we also offer you the ability with the volumetric tests to send us uh, a volume from your side so that you can test your ability to integrate a large volume from the ECMS. So this is very important. There was a question in the chat about the support after go live. So it's very important to know that in production, the ECMS service desk will be there for you, of course, for all production issues and there will be a service desk related to the testing issues because of course after we go live the test environment will still be open we will move to the next version of the service we will be looking to have our yearly or uh, bi biannual releases where we will uh, improve we will add change requests etc to the service and for this reason there will always be support for you in production and also in the test environment level for your testing of our future releases. So this is very, very important. Um, and there was a question again about the disruption during the testing period, where, as I said, we're working with our non-functional task force now to ensure that you have a better, uh, uh, you have a better quality of service. Uh, let me just have a look. There was, uh, there's a few about production, I think. Um, there was a, a question about for someone who could only um, have a, a successful U2A, so they've managed to connect to the GUI, but they haven't managed to connect in A2A. For us, connectivity is based on your business case. If you are planning to use the, the ECMS in A2A, and, and of course many are, uh, a lot are, then you must prove A2A connectivity. Please liaise with the service desk. Please liaise with your NSP. Um, you know, U2A is not a, a, a valid uh, is not if you're going to if your business case is also to use a2a you must connect as soon as possible yeah um the the second live testing phase a business day testing so this the business day testing 
uh, you know, this is where we will run the schedule the same in a live timing schedule, the same as it would run in production. So we ask you to take advantage of this, to use the extra time for some timing, to configure your system, to make sure your internal system is ready to handle the production schedule, and you will have full support from the service desk for this. Uh, there's also a, a question about uh, that the CTP2E phase is very short for the participants. In, indeed it is, it's also very challenging. We have a challenging plan here, but we're really looking to take advantage of this period where all of the systems are connected and we ask you to, to really intensify your testing and to, to uh, liaise with your service desk and to work. It is quite a tight timeline, that's completely true, but we're looking to, we're looking to get as much done in this period as we possibly can. Uh, there's a question about contingency, contingency tests. So this is, um, this is uh, what we are planning. We have, of course, the ECONS 2 contingency module that you all know about related to, uh, it's the contingency module of our, of our RTGS of, of T2. And uh, we are testing internally the interaction between the, e the ECONS 2 and the ECMS. And we will be holding what we call operational related tests related to the contingency where we have to move to the ECONS 2, your NCB will let you know when these are on and you are all cordially invited to take part in this testing. Uh, it's a very important part, of course, that we can, that we can uh, use this contingency module and that ECMS can move into this contingency mode. So I think this is the, um, the, the most of the questions in the chat, but we'll come back a bit later and I would hand over to Anna Issa now to go through the migration with you.